ladies and gentlemen, terrible news, that is, if you're AAA publishers, there is a downturn in pre-orders. According to Activision, last night there was an invest in relation conference call, so this is where they were discussing things with their investors, and uh, Activision publishing boss, his name is Eric Hirschberg, hopefully I've pronounced that correctly, has actually been asked, what about pre-orders? How are they relating now to the company's titles and what's going on in basically? And he said, it's not just Activision games, but it's across the board. Um, so gamers are starting to actually pre-order less. In fact, one of the reasons behind this is because the PS4 and Xbox One and PC there's no real need to pre-order, because if you're going to buy the title digitally, it doesn't, I mean, what they're going to do, run out? You can't run out of binary. As well as, of course, the slow decay. The rotting corpses, also known as last generation consoles. Let's face it, most people now are starting to make the move onto the next generation consoles, or a gaming PC. So, one of the reasons that AAA studios, publishers, basically, like you pre-ordering, is it because it allows you to work out, or them to work out, purchase intent. In other words, how popular is this going to be? It basically allows investors to salivate, and provides, of course, awareness, and it's basically a marketing ploy. That's one of the reasons, as well, that they offer bonuses. Now, they even say that it's just one data point. Um, so you've got to remember that they're going to be doing other things, like they're going to probably check out, say, news stories on websites, they're going to look at the official Facebook pages, they're going to be checking out search trends, there's a lot of stuff that goes into this, much more than what you might realise. And indeed, Destiny's awareness is at an all-time high, and in fact, it's still going up. Um, compared to any other new game intellectual property this distance from launch. That's what the boss has stated. One of the p reasons behind this is cited to be the very popular open beta. Now, apparently, there were around 4.6 million players who have actually played the open beta, which is, when you think about it, an astounding number. Um, when you consider the a relatively successful game, uh, we're talking like a AAA here, um, you know, hits the 3 million-ish, maybe 4 million mark. Um, not maybe the biggest titles, but certainly a pretty well-selling game. So we've actually got 4.5 million, which is pretty impressive. Although, to be fair, some of those were likely codes that friends have given away or giveaways from websites, that type of thing. So what are my thoughts on this? I've ranted heavily, extremely heavily, about pre-orders, the pre-order culture. And I've got to say, from the perspective of the consumer, I think it's really good. The problem is, digital, there's, there's multiple factors to really consider here. The first is digital pre-orders. They kind of piss me off, to be honest. Um, the fact that they actually give you more stuff is kind of an incentive, because they know really... You, they can't give you the fear. They can't give you the fear of, I'm going to run out of copies. Um, you know, at the end of the day, even say on Steam, at the bottom line is, all it's going to be is a unique serial code, and they could basically generate them. I mean, it's z 0 to 9 and A to Z, so pretty much the serial code could be whatever, so they're not going to run out of those. Um, and in the case of the PS4, Xbox One, of course, it's just pretty much tied to your accounts. So, there's no real incentive for people to pre-order if they're thinking about going online. The only thing they could do is offer you bonuses. So, for example, you know, they'll give you an extra weapon, or they'll give you a customizable skin, or they'll give you an extra level. And if we look at retail, so in other words, either buying from, say, Amazon, or buying in the UK, I sometimes pre-order from shop2.net, um, or sometimes game, or whatever store... Um, the only real reason I do that now is if I want the copy bloody early and I'm not being given a press copy. In which case, I sometimes will be tempted to pre-order. But generally speaking, if I'm like on the fence about a game, particularly if I'm just doing, if I'm not really interested in covering it for RGT, if I'm just doing it out of my own, I want to play this, I just don't give two craps about pre-ordering. And I'll tell you why. 
Because how many times have we been screwed over with shitty games? And this is the thing. It's like anything in life. If I tell you this game's going to rock, you buy it, it's a pile of crap. Sorry, guys. Really sorry. Next one. We've learned from the mistakes. We're going to fix it. Next game. It's a pile of crap. Um, sorry about that. And this is the problem. Look at the industry as a whole. You've got visual downgrades with Watch Dogs. And to be honest, yes, Watch Dogs is popular. But I think many will agree. I personally would agree. Um, and most of the RG team, RGT I'm sorry, team would agree. Um, Watch Dogs was kind of a letdown, actually. It was okay um, in terms of gameplay. It just wasn't revolutionary. And in terms of graphics, the PS4, Xbox One versions, they were pretty good. PC version was pretty shitty, to be honest. It was held back by visual downgrades. Fortunately, there were mods which allowed it to look really, really good. Almost like the E3 demo. But the fact of the matter is, they burned bridges there, and consumer trust goes down. While some people definitely have a hate EA brigade, or a hate Sega, or a hate Activision. But the bottom line is, you know, for the most part... Most games are of a reasonable quality, I feel. Most aren't broken messes, despite what people might believe. But the fact of the matter is, you just might not like the game. Particularly when so many websites are, well, not exactly genuine. Um, I'm not going to say too much on this, but you can Google. Uh, quite a lot of big sites have been accused of bribery. I'm not going to go into which ones because, you know, I don't want to get in any trouble here. But you can Google it yourself and it, you know, just kind of put the name with the word bribe or um, fake review and you'll come quite a few results. And that's the, f that's the thing. So it's like one of the benefits of YouTube, one of the benefits of like smaller people such as ourselves, but certainly not just us, even... Um, say total biscuit they're going to be fairly honest and actually honesty sometimes can get you in a bit of trouble but that's the bottom line it's like how often do we see these bull shots do we see this gameplay from um pretty much like the best possible angle and to be honest with you this isn't really any different from what's going on in the movie industry I've personally seen dozens of movies where I was like, well, the trailer made it look better than this. You know, horror movies where pretty much the five or three or four scariest scenes, whatever, were pretty much half spoiled in the trailer. And you're expecting, you know, you're like, wow, this is in the trailer. Imagine the real thing. Okay. 90 minutes of padding, 5 minutes of scares. And there's tons of other examples, of course, in action movies and other bits and, and other popular of the genres. The, generally speaking, they're going to give the most impressive section. So that's just marketing. The fact of the matter is, however, with gaming, we've all seen titles like Guys of the Wolf. We've all seen games like Colonial Marines. We've all bought that one game where we pre-ordered it. It's arrived on our doorstep before the reviews have come in. Because let's face it, they put embargoes for a reason. And then you start playing the, the game, you know, or maybe you don't. Maybe you go to work and then you're like chilling, coming home, come from work or school, just chilling. And you're like, oh, I'm just going to have a quick look at the review. You know, you're all excited. And then you see 7 out of 10. Or you see random forums that you go to, for example, NeoGAF or whatever. And everyone's going absolutely militant on the game because, well, it just hasn't lived up to the hype. And then you feel pretty crappy. Personally speaking, I don't like the pre-order phenomenon. Um, there's the simple reason. The games are so expensive. In the UK, they're around 40 to £45, pounds, on console anyway. And... In the US, as far as I understand it, they're about 60 US dollars. On top of that as well, you've got season passes, which just piss me the hell off. It's like, what really pisses me off about season passes, and yeah, you can tell I'm starting to get a little bit angry from thinking about them. What really pisses me off is half the time, the content is not even freaking announced. So, in other words, not only am I buying the pre-order of the game on the promise that... I believe your company is going to give me a good title. And there are 
some developers and publishers where you can be reasonably sure. For example, Naughty Dog. You can probably guess uh, Blizzard, same thing for most of their games. Not all, but most of them. I mean, obviously you had the whole Diablo situation where the servers went down, but I digress. But now you're also getting season passes and microtransactions, but the season passes really anger me. Um, simply because, wait, why am I buying this again for content that's going to be coming in the future? But you can't tell me much more other than it's going to have some extra maps. What maps? It's like, that just angers me. Um, what about what about if I'm buying the game for primarily single player content? And they say, yeah, it's going to have a couple of single player pieces. How long? What's the length of them? Two minutes? Three hours? Five hours? Give me a number here. And that's the major issue with a lot of this. And trust is definitely going down. Plus, as I mentioned, and our Activision brought up originally, the fact that the next generation systems do have this digital purchasing, which does have major issues. There are some games which are reasonable price. I think it was The Last of Us in the UK was roughly what I paid in retail. But aside from that, digital pricing is usually a bit too high anyway. Bottom line is, we as consumers are the ones that really should have the power. Just like you can go to a different YouTube channel, just like you can decide, oh, you know what, I want to cancel my film channels. Just like you can decide, I don't want to buy this newspaper, I don't want to go see this movie. You really should have the power, and you can't make an informed decision until the reviews are out. That's why I don't like the pre-order culture, because oftentimes you're basically coughed up the cash, and, well, you're just basically gambling out of the goodness of your heart that the game is not going to suck, or the game... And the fact of the matter is, to be honest, a game doesn't have to be bad for you not to like it, because... Despite what the internet says, and let's just be really honest here, really brutally honest. If I call the game, I don't really like it. And this is really hard as a reviewer. Objective is not the same thing as subjective. So just because I don't like a game, just because I find it boring, just because it's not really my thing, it doesn't mean it's a bad game. It just means that it's not my thing. And so... It's until you start seeing the let's plays of it, until you start seeing unbiased edited footage, so you can actually get a reasonable, certainly not 100% accurate, because the difference between when you've actually played the game and when you're seeing it being played, especially when it comes to certain games, because, for example, how the controls work, how the combo system works, whatever, but you can at least get a reasonable understanding, and that, I think, is the key. Anyway... I have a whole rant on this I could do, so I'm trying to restrain myself just a little smidge. But I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.